Our scene takes place just after Macbeth has rode ahead of Duncan to the castle and relayed the prophecy to his wife, telling her that he is leaving tomorrow. Lady Macbeth then responds, O oh, never shall son that morrow see. This line is more complex. Inversion is used here, and when we simplify it, it says that the sun shall never see that tomorrow. Obviously, she means that the day will never come because they plan on killing Duncan that night. The use of the word sun is significant. Not only it means that Duncan will not live to see the next sunrise, but it subtly compares Duncan to the sun. Being the king, he is the sun of his kingdom, but if their plan goes accordingly, he won't live until the morning. The sun metaphorically represents Duncan and how tomorrow the kingdom will no longer have him as a ruler, just as in the metaphor the sun will not come up tomorrow. Lady Macbeth starts to give Macbeth instructions, and is clearly manipulating him, in hopes that he will be dependable in helping her kill Duncan and becoming queen. In line 8, she speaks in a simile, comparing his face to a book, and telling him that his unguarded expression could be their downfall. The diction choice of Strange is important here as well. Pulling off the murder of Duncan requires Macbeth and Lady Macbeth to appear just as everyone expects them to, while committing a rather unexpected murder. If the, expression of face, if the expression on Macbeth's face is strange, then it means that he, is act, he isn't acting as an innocent man would. She continues with, to beguile the time, look like the time. The time has an alternate meaning in this context, not quite the hour, but it means the current situation. Lady Macbeth is telling him that to trick or deceive everyone around him, he must look like the time, or he must look appropriate to the situation of welcoming Duncan to the castle. She instructs him to bear welcome in his eye, his hand, his tongue, meaning that his appearance, his actions, and his speech must all seem welcoming so that their true actions will go unnoticed. At this point, her manipulation takes on a flirtatious undertone, referencing specific body parts. She then tells him to look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it, alluding to the biblical story of Eve being tempted to sin by the serpent in the Garden of Eden. We see this reflected here with Macbeth as the more feminine flower, or Eve, while Lady Macbeth is the masculine symbol of the serpent, who is salaciously tempting him to sin with her. The word flower stands in a line on its own, which not only preserves the iambic pentameter of the previous line, but it also emphasizes her calling him a flower, which, as we've seen in other parts of the play, is a way that she manipulates him by demasculating him. Um, reversing the typical gender roles of this illusion, adds to the sense that Lady Macbeth is the more powerful part of the unit, and she's asking him to be deceitful in her lust for the power of the crown. When she says that he that's coming must be provided for, she intends a double meaning. They must be prepared to give Duncan food and shelter for the night, but she also means provided for, in the same threatening sense that she may have said they had to take care of him or kill him. She then tells him to put this night's great business into her dispatch, meaning that she plans on taking care of everything for him, and he, has, he, he only has to play his part in order to ensure their success. The word choice great business is a euphemism for killing Duncan. Using the word great tells us that Lady Macbeth sees the murder not only as pivotal, but also somewhat glorious. Business treats the murder as a necessary transaction and doesn't attach any guilt or emotion to it. The dominating you shall put echoes the flirtatious tone we've seen throughout the passage. Referring to her dispatch is asking him to put the responsibility under her ju jurisdiction which is ironic because, as a general, we would expect Macbeth to take on most of the responsibility himself. In the lines which shout to all our nights and days to come give solely sovereign sway and masterdom, Lady Macbeth is saying that putting the murder in her hands will later give them sole control over the kingdom. Essentially, she is helping get Duncan out of the way, and that will ensure that Macbeth is the only true king, and he will have sovereign sway and masterdom over the kingdom. The diction here of swaying and mastering something conjures up an image of a ship. But is the ship captained by Macbeth, or is it captained by the Weird Sisters' prophecy? Lady Macbeth could mean that her actions will forevermore give him complete sovereign control over the kingdom. But alternately, the murder is just another step in the prophecy being fulfilled, meaning that all their days to come will be even further steered and captained by the prophecy. The rhyming couplet structure adds a sense of finality to the end of her speech, and it leaves Macbeth no room to argue with her manipulative instructions. Lady Macbeth's use of her sexuality to manipulate and persuade Macbeth eliminates the power dynamic within their relationship. Clearly, she has no reservations about the murder, treating it as a business, and trying to ensure that Macbeth's conscience will not betray her when the time comes. In this way, Macbeth becomes a much more sympathetic character because he's used as a tool for Lady Macbeth to climb further towards success.
So now we're going to perform the whole speech for you. And I'll be playing the part of Lady Macbeth and Zoe will be the My dearest love, Duncan comes here tonight. Edwin goes hence? Tomorrow, as he purposes. Oh, never shall sun that morrow see. Your face, my fame, is the book where men may read strange matters. To beguile the time, look like the time. By welcome in your eye, your hand, your tongue, look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. He that's coming must be provided for, and you shall put this night's great business into my dispatch, which, to all our nights and days to come, shall go solely sovereign sway and master them. See. 